symmetric hypertrophy, a speckled appearance of the myocardium, poor left ventricle function, enlarged atria, this is most likely amyloid heart disease. But Fabian, which information can we get from speckled tracking here? Speckled tracking, I think in cardiac amyloidosis is a quite an important tool because it can show us the typical pattern of amyloid deposition in the left heart. And I'm going to show you the speckle tracking analysis and going to show you the typical feature of cardiac amyloidosis. This is the speckle tracking analysis. And you see all the apical planes, the three chamber, four chamber and two chamber views. And in the right side here, you can see the bullseye. And the bullseye has a typical configuration and we call this apical sparing. I just recently heard a very interesting name. Have you ever heard the name of cherry on the cake? Yes, but not in this context, but it clearly sh tells us that it looks like a cherry on the cake. And we have a gradient between the apical segments and the basal segments. That means we have a preserved function in the apical segments and a very poor function in the basal segments. It appears as actually you can even appreciate that even in the 2D image. Yes, if you carefully look at the 2D image here, I put the mouse here, you can see that the function in the apical segment is quite good, whereas there's rarely any function, systolic function, in the basal segment. So if you look at this global strain, which is minus 11.8, it's significantly reduced. It does show that this is probably a more advanced form of amyloid heart disease as well. And I think in this case, the speckle tracking images confirms what we already suspect. But the nice thing about speckle tracking is that, especially in subclinical cases, it can really point us to the direction of amyloid heart disease. And we're going to show you a number of cases where this is actually present. So look out for apical sparing, the cherry on the cake, but also be aware that this phenomena is not always specific for amyloid heart disease, at least in my opinion. And one other thing. Frequently, especially in the end stages of the disease, you will see very markedly reduced strain patterns or strain values, as in this example here. Here we only have a very small cherry on the cake. The global longitudinal strain is only minus 7.4%. Be aware again that while you might have relatively normal radial function, longitudinal function is already reduced. So again, the very same disease process as in hypertensive heart disease. Just to exemplify this, again, you see that radial function in this specific patient is quite normal despite a significantly reduced longitudinal strain. In the end stage of the disease, radial strain will also deteriorate and then you will have global left ventricle dysfunction. And these patients, as you will well understand, have a very poor prognosis. So in summary, where can you use speckle tracking in the setting of amyloid heart disease? First, to detect amyloid heart disease in an early stage. We can use it to help us differentiate between other forms of increased wall thickness. And we can also look at right ventricle function, very important because there is evidence that the association of right ventricular dysfunction with left ventricular dysfunction seems to carry a worse prognosis. And finally, what we can also do is we can look at the severity of the disease, we can follow up patients, and as we learned, it also gives us some information on the prognosis of patients. Let me just demonstrate here on one patient how we can follow up this patient who started out with a global longitudinal strain of minus 7.8 and you can nicely see the further deterioration of longitudinal function after follow-up. This is something that you cannot do as well with ejection fraction because at least in my view ejection fraction is, has a higher variability and the strain values are more sensitive to smaller changes. So a wonderful way of detecting progression of the disease.